Super 8 film was introduced by Kodak in 1965. At first the film was silent, but in the early 70s the technology was developed to allow sound recordings in the camera. For those that could afford them, sound cameras became the must-have gadget to own. Sound cameras included a magnetic head. The head records the sound on a thin strip of tape called magnetic stripe, which is bonded to the Super 8 film. At the time, you could purchase the film with stripe, called pre-striped film, in 50-foot and 200-foot cartridges. You could also buy the stripe separately and do it yourself, a process many call striping. Most sound cameras exposed the film at 18 frames per second, but when the film was exposed at 24 frames per second, higher sound quality was achieved, due to the tape moving over the sound head at a faster rate. However, even at faster frame rates, the sound quality was still less when compared to compact cassette. Super 8 sound film had two stripes. The main stripe, or track, contained the sound. The other, called the balance track, was used to keep the focus even across the screen and to steady the film as it ran through the camera and projector, but not for recording sound on. However, it was quickly realised that this track could be used as a second channel of sound. By the late 70s, equipment was manufactured which had two magnetic heads for recording two and playing back both tracks. The second track was commonly used to create stereo sound. As stereo sound was developed, an optical sound system was introduced. The optical sound system was advantageous for packaged movies, as the track was more robust and couldn't be accidentally erased. In fact, it was almost exclusively used for that purpose, and as a result, there are few projectors that will play back optical sound on Super 8. Instead of using magnetic media, optical sound uses light. The exciter lamp shines through the aperture window, then through the soundtrack. The resulting patterns are picked up on a light-sensitive photocell, which converts the pattern into an electrical signal which is turned into sound. The main disadvantage with an optical track was a reduction in sound quality. Although you can't purchase Super 8 film with stripe on, many people still add it after processing, in a process called laminate striping. The main stripe and balance stripe are kept as tape on separate reels and added one at a time. A special adhesive is used to bond the stripe to the film. Once the film is threaded through the striping machine and projector, the process begins. The guides on the striping machine keep the stripe running accurately along the edge of the film. The process is repeated for the balance stripe. Once the film is prepared, the process of sound mixing can begin. Many Super 8 sound projectors have connections which allow recording to the tracks from an external source. As it is no longer possible to capture the sound live on stripe, many people record on other devices and then synchronize the sound with the film later. Others add pre-recorded sound effects and music. Package movies are still available on Super 8 and the striping process is on an almost industrial scale at Duran Films. Here they use double Super 8 film and a special paste solution including magnetic particles. I mean I used to do this while Derek was alive, but Derek used to do a good percentage of it. I used to do all the recording. The paste is applied to the film using a roller. The film passes through a drying cupboard and is ironed to make sure the paste has a smooth finish. And you can't be pulled away from this. You have to be left to concentrate and watch what's happening. And so, because he wasn't,
there would be hiccups. So everybody knows that once I'm in here, you know, I don't like to be interrupted. The majority of them are mono, but there are, the stereo titles are there, but there are perhaps only two dozen stereo titles. The sound is recorded to the double Super 8 from full coat 16mm film, which is film fully coated with a magnetic material. Two balance and two main stripe. Therefore you actually end up with a left and a right track. These machines record at four times speed. The recording equipment used was originally designed for 35mm feature films but has been modified for use with double Super 8. This is Die Hard 3. The film, still in its double Super 8 form, is split into two by a rotating blade, making Super 8 film ready for distribution. On this machine, that's marked because that's supposed to be the optimum speed, yet it never used to like to go much faster than that. And that is it. Occasionally, the stripe solution is not applied evenly, or there may even be a fault on the original recording. To prevent films being issued with these imperfections, they are spot checked for quality. The only way to find out is to re-record re it, yeah. and then see if it's still the same. Yeah. If it is, it's probably the stripe. Oh, we'll yeah. see. As Super 8 equipment ages, and with no new equipment or spares being made, maintenance and repairs become essential. If you're lucky, it will just be dirt on the sound heads, like this projector. If not, it's handy to have a couple of extra projectors for spare parts. An epic bumper. Filming on Super 8 has undergone a renaissance in recent years, but whether the sound element survives is now under scrutiny. You can no longer buy pre striped film, and as the striping process would expose the film, people have to use other means of capturing sound, such as a digital recording device. Many people may choose to capture on film and then use a telecine process so they can edit and distribute on video. So there is less need for Super 8 sound editing equipment and projectors. The future seems bright for Super 8 film, but it may well be silent. <laughs>